Um, all right. Do we see chemiluminescence ILM 310404G? Yeah, it's good. Okay, perfect. Hopefully we will not lose connection this time. No promises. So learning objectives on this one are describe chemical reactions related to chemiluminescent analyzers. Describe the components of chemiluminescent nitric oxide NO analyzer. Describe the principle of analysis and application of chemiluminescent analyzers. So those are the three that we'll be doing. So when we talk about luminescence, we've already talked about that when we hit um, ultraviolet light uh, and it was on SO2 at this time when we were talking about it. it uh, it excites the molecule of SO2 with the UV light. And then when that excitation comes down, it gives off visible light. And uh, in chemiluminescence, we call this cold substance or processes. So there's luminescence, cold light emissions. And we have fluorescence, which we talked about in UV. And then we have chemiluminescence. So these are the cold light emission uh analyzers that we use visible light emitted by exposure to uv radiation so mostly we use that in so2 an analysis and then we have visible light emitted by chemical reaction and hence the word chemiluminescence it's a chemical reaction that occurs and the light is emitted from that chemical reaction and that's uh, nitrogen dioxide analysis, which is what? Acid rain? That was a question. <laughs> Somebody's got to answer me so that I know that I'm online. All right, Tim, you, uh, you cut out just as you're asking the question. What was it? Okay. So uh, NO2 analysis. I was, what the heck was I asking there? Oh, even uh, basically if you can hear me. So that's I, I once in a while just give me a feedback that you can hear me. All right, let's go on. So we have reactants and we have products plus light. So in this case, we have NO, nitrous oxide, and O3, which is ozone. And once it reacts, we have we make an NO2, which is nitrogen dioxide and simple oxygen plus we get some light off of this. This is in page three. So nitrous oxide plus ozone reacts and I get normal molecule of nitrogen dioxide, which is acid rain, plus oxygen. And then I get some light energy also. So this is the light energy that the analyzer is going to look at and the amount of light energy is proportional to the amount of uh, nitrogen di dioxide in the sample. So this is the whole reaction that we're looking for with this analyzer. So a glow stick that contains, and you've guys seen these glow sticks that we use, we break them and um, xylem it's got in there. So it's diphenyl oxalate. Uh, it has a dye and plastic tube and then hydrogen peroxide put in that uh, into the tube and a breakable glass and breaking the uh, glass produces a chemiluminescent reaction. Sometimes that's hard to say. So these are just your glow sticks. So basically what we're doing here, uh, it, this is chemiluminescence where you get this hydrogen peroxide and you break this down and you get this xylem here. And then you'll get that glowing um, light emitted. And this is what chemiluminescence is. And this is what our analyzer is going to measure. So learning objective two is describe components of a chemiluminescence nitric oxide analyzer. So nitric oxide and nitrogen dioxide emitted during temperature fuel combustions so that's going to be in your stacks at your plants. 
collectively called nitrogen, nit nitrogen basically X, NOX. These are oxides of nitrogen. That's a combination of your nitrous oxide and nitrogen dioxide. We call it NOx. Typically displays the following three measurements. We can have NO, nitric oxide. We can have NO2, which is nitrogen dioxide. And again, we have NOx, which is a combination of NO2, right? So NO and NO2. So chemiluminescence analyzers can only handle cool, dry samples, which restricts the sampling options. Now, these analyzers, again, are, are away from your plant set way. Uh, normally, most of them in the prevailing winds uh, direction, uh, away from the plant. So we're looking for cool, dry samples. We don't have a, really a sample system for the chemiluminescence analyzers. So we need an extractive, cool, dry sample. We have some dilution probes, and we have cool, dry air. Sample system, as you know, because I say this every time, are frequently the cause of analyzer error. It's not the analyzer, it's the actual sample system. So analyzer components in operation. So here you have a chemiluminescent analyzer. So what, the, what we do with this particular analyzer is we have dry air or, uh, and, or oxygen goes into this ozonator. So oxygen O2 goes into this ozonator and it produces um, O3. And that's all this does because we have that chemical reaction that I showed you in the first couple pages where we have ozone and we have NO and it makes NO2 and O2 and it emit light and then it emits light. So this is, we have the cool dry air here. We have the cool clean dry gas here. We have an NO2 to NO converter. I'll show you how that one, well, I'll just, um, it just show you how that works and, and why we have a three-way valve here. We have a reaction chamber. Right here, we have this constant flow of O3. So we have constant flow of ozone because we need more ozone than we do of, uh, of um, nitric oxide because we want complete um, conversion here. So we have uh, an excess of O3. So it goes down into the reaction chamber right here and it produces with ozone O3 and NO, it produces that light. We have a photomultiplying tube here. Um, we have a, a light filter so that it only lets the light through uh, from the reaction. And then here we're going to have some ozone excess. And then we have to take that through a pump and we have to go to an O3. And then if the NO2 gets out, we have to scrub it. Um, we have temperature sensors and pressure sensors that have to be kept constant. And then, of course, we have the signal processing and display electronics. So number one, excess ozone is produced to ensure complete reaction and retain analyzer accuracy. So I need more ozone here than I have NO2 so that I get that complete reaction. The reaction chamber houses the constant flow of O3 and NO. So nitrous oxide and ozone, we have always a complete supply. And as it comes in here, it gets pumped out also. Three, a red light filter selects wavelengths of emitted light. So again, it's, it's, uh, it selects certain wavelengths that we're trying to measure from the reaction. The photomultiplying tube measures the intensity of the light. Um, in this case, it's cooled and it, it will we'll show you a cooling chamber as we get it a little further into the lecture. So it's cooled to reduce electrical noise and accurately measure the parts per billion concentration. So NO2 and NO3 are toxic and have to be scrubbed before venting. So here's where we are where they have to be scrubbed. We can't just vent that. We have to scrub it first. And microprocessors correct for temperature and pressure. 
So we'll always have temperature sensors and pressure sensors and the electronics will basically correct for the temperatures and, and, and correct for the pressure measurements. Ozonator. So ozone can be created in two ways, by flowing air through a very high electrical field. So when we're talking about air, we're talking about oxygen in, in the air. So high electrical charge breaks down O2 molecules into atoms of, ox, of O, which will bond with O2 to form O3, ozone. So here's the case where we have a ozonator. So I get dry air, which has oxygen in it. We have 10,000 volts AC that they're supplying from here to there. And ozone gas produced between the gas uh, between these walls. All of this is electrically conductive, and when I put the O2 in, I, I, I zap it with uh, 10,000 volts AC. I get O3 out, and this O3 out of this ozonator has to be more than the NO because we want complete reaction. The other way to do it is by using UV light. So high frequency UV radiation, and it's less than 240 nanometers. And it splits O2 molecules into atoms of, of O, um, which will be, which will bond with your O2 and O3 to form O3. So two ways of doing uh, this, uh, producing ozone is by flowing air through a very high electrical field and by UV light. The detectors, photomultiplying tube. Uh, this is a little bit of a, uh, it, it basically zones in on the photomultiplying tube. And it's got this cooling block here. It's got the optical filter here. It's got the NO2 and the light and the light being emitted from here. Um, the reason they cool it here, it takes away the heat because we want to get rid of any of these electrical noises. So the whole, there's a high voltage that, that's put on here, and then I get the signal out. And this here is a cooling block. It's basically a heat sink. Again, any excess O3, ozone, goes out to the vacuum pump. So nitrous oxide and ozone react to produce excited NO2 and light. The light that's emitted is picked up by that photomultiplying tube. Uses high levels of ozone to create maximum NO2. And then again, this is our reaction right here. So NO plus NO3 reacts and it, it builds nitrogen dioxide plus oxygen plus light. So reduce chamber pressure, which reduces molecular collisions. Uh, if we have more pressure in there, this, this has to be actually under a, a small vacuum so that uh, we don't get collisions, uh, molecular collisions. An op optical filter allows select wavelengths to pass. So this is my optical filter. And a photomultiplying tube measures the intensity of the light. And of course, the intensity of the light measured by the photomultiplier tube is going to be the concentration of your NO2. The photomultiplier tube is cooled by therm thermoelectric cooler to reduce electrical noises. A scrubber is a device with solid uh, packing material that either retains the scrub chemicals or reacts with it to produce harmless oxygen. So O3, we get a surplus of O3, it gets pumped out, it gets scrubbed, or reacts with a, reacts with a product to have, uh, and then we can vent just safe oxygen. The, NO, the NO2 is also getting scrubbed. We'll get scrubbed through here too. Describe the principles of analysis and application of chemiluminous analyzers. So basically you have, um, your, well, right now we have a, a controller here but what we're doing is this ambient air and stack normally contains 
nitrous oxide and nitrogen dioxide. And that's from basically combustion. Ambient air analyzers use chemiluminescence measuring NOx levels at parts per billion. We talked about the UV analyzer measuring stack gas for NO2, and that's in parts per million. When we use chemiluminescence, we're measuring the NOx levels at parts per billion. Excuse me. <coughs> Can you still hear me? Still with you. All right, perfect. I got uh, one question for you, Tim, and I might be getting ahead of you, but um, like you're saying that the NO reacts with the ozone, the O3, and that produces yeah. light. So how does NO2 react with O3 to produce light? Well, your, your reaction, I'll, I'll, I'll send it back to the reaction. The reaction is, where is that react? Right here. So you have NO, so that's nitrous oxide, plus you have O3, right? So you, right. you have your ozone. When you react, when these two combine together, then you get, you get NO2 production plus O2 yeah. plus the light. Yeah, yeah, so, so then that works for NO, but they say that the analyzers can either measure NO or NO2 or NOx, right? So if you're measuring NO2 in a sample, then how does NO2 react with O3 to produce the light? Okay, great question. Um, and, and, and we will get to that. But if you if you look at this current slide, you see this NO is coming through here? Yeah. Right? Because we have an NO, NO2 to NO. Um, oh, okay. that, that so, reacts, right? NO, oh, yeah, the converter, NO2 to NO converter. Okay. Yeah. That's I right. See what you're saying. Yeah. So then you take your NO2, and I'll show you that because then um, there's, there's some switching valves that will switch to NOx, then back to NO. And then uh, if we take the NOx and we subtract the NO from it, that's going to give us our NO2, nitrogen dioxide, how much is in there. Okay. Copy that. I figured I was getting ahead of you. Yeah. No, and that's okay. Questions are always good. So, so uh, again, when we're measuring stack gas, we're, um, it normally contains NO and NO2, and we use UV for stack gas, and this when we're using ambient air analyzers, again, we use chemiluminescence because we get down to this parts per billion. Stack gases use UV analyzers to measure parts per million. So we did that. We talked about that uh, in our UV analyzers. Okay, here we go. So this will be the operating modes, and this will be uh, the explanation of uh, the NO2 to NO converter and how we actually um, can measure the exact amounts of nitrogen dioxide. So first, the NO nitrous oxide mode connects the sample directly to the reaction chamber. Mm -hmm. So when I'm getting a sample coming through here, I have a three-way valve. So this is the NO plus NO2. It's basically taking NOx. It, it goes down into here. Uh, you got a, a heated metal reactant in here, which changes NO2 to NO because we need to know uh, that NO is being taken to the reaction chamber. So this is just pure air, or not pure air, but it's, it's just the ambient air. So it takes the NO plus the NO2 into here. So I'll basically take a NOx into here. The NOx mode converts NO2 nitrogen dioxide into the sample uh, to NO, because this is NO is what we want to convert, the NO2 to NO. And then switching back and forth between the two modes calculates for NO2. So in this case here, I'm, I've, got, I've got the air, and that's the NOx. It goes in through here. The only thing that's going to react with the ozone is the NO. So this is everything. Then when I take the NO2 converter to NO, then I can determine through this calculation 
the NOx minus the NO is going to be equal to the nitrogen dioxide. So the nitric oxide is here. That's the only thing it reacts with. So I switch back and forth. This, this sample goes into the converter. This sample doesn't. And it goes back and forth, back and forth. When I'm using this sample, I'm using all the NOx. So I take the NOx, which is the combination of nitrous oxide and nitrogen dioxide. And I take the nitrogen NOx minus the nitric oxide. It gives me the amount of NO2 that is in the air. So does that kind of explain it? A little better? Yeah, for sure. That definitely makes a lot more sense now. Yeah. So we have this three-way valve, and obviously the programmer does it. It'll change this. It, it turns this one off and on, and off and off, back, back and forth, back and forth. So that this one here is taking NOx, and this one here is, is converting the NO2 to NO. So we take the NOx and we subtract all the NO that's in there. We get NO2 is our final result of what we're looking for, because it's the it's the it's the ozone and the, and, and the nitrous oxide that gives that chemical reaction of NO2, oxygen, and light. Um, this is just an example. Chemiluminous analyzer measures NO concentration at 35 ppm when the sample passes through an NO2 to NO converter. The concentration of NO2 ppm is measured when the sample bypasses NO2 to NO converter. So then we have NOx, we have our NO and NO2. So the NOx makes 35 ppm NO that is passing through the filter and the true NO is 23 parts per m as, as is bypassing the filter. So you can just do this calculation and it's, it's basically just showing you that NOx minus NO is going to be equal to my nitrogen dioxide. And that, that example is on page 11, and you can just walk through that or read through that one and to, to uh, do the calculations. But it's just a simple mathematical uh, subtraction equation. Flow control, um, obviously that's really important, uh, as well as pressure and temperature. But a capillary as thick as, a, as the walled glass tube made with very small bore of known diameter used for controlling the flow of the sample at dry air to the analyzer. Um, so this is why it's particularly important. And in this case here, we're going to sample in. We got particulate filter. We got a sample capillary. Um, we got a we got the mode valve and NO2 converter that it goes into. Um, we get the dry air. We get the ozonator. All these capillaries are doing is making sure that I have constant flow, because you need the constant flow to uh, uh, to be accurate with your analyzer goes into that reaction chamber and that's where the light, the ozone and then and the um, nitrous oxide form NO2 and light. And then of course you've got your vacuum pump here, which which takes out the excess ozone and it scrubs it to vent O2 only. So basically it's just showing you that the, the flow control is, how it's contained, how it's measured, and how it's made is through these small sample capillaries. It's not like a big pipe or anything like that. Intensity of light is based on NO molecules entering the reaction chamber. So modern instruments take advantage of computing power of microprocessors to con continuously correct for basically temperature and pressure. And this, this table here is just on uh, page 13 where it says increased temperature effect on density decreases effect on molecules decreases so this is why this uh, temperature and pressure have to be uh, sent to the microprocessor so you get accurate results calibration pure zero air should be dry and contain no contaminants so I've got this instrument air supply. I got this silicone gel, which is a drying agent. I got this purify, uh, purifil acid gas scrubber. I've got this uh, activated charcoal trace gas scrubber. And I got this five micron particulate filter. So when we're using zero gas, 
it's still going to be zero gas by the time it's out here. Um, that's how pure it has to be for these analyzers to work properly, the chemiluminescence, because they are measuring parts per billion. So it tells you what it does here. The silical gel removes water vapor. It's got to be clean. It's got to be dry. Pure fuel removes the gases, any other gases that are in the air. H2S, SO2, NO2, or NO. Activated charcoals removes any traces of wide range gases. And then the particulate filter to get my zero air. So that'd be my zero calibration for sure. Here I have my zero air. In this case, this is calibration. I've got a hundred parts per million NO. So you mean chemo, uh, chemo NO, uh, NO2 and, and, and NOx analyzers are calibrated using diluter or dynamic gas calibrated to dilute high concentration of gas into zero air. And if you notice here, I've got my flows here, flows of cal gas, flows of the zero air. I got the cal mix and you guys will be doing this next week as far as this calculation. So cal mix is equal to cal gas times F cal. So the flow of the cal gas, FO, flow of the zero plus the cal gas. And, it, and you, so this formula, it's in your formula sheets and you'll be using that next Tuesday. And we're working on these analyzers. Let me see if I can find where this measurement is here. Yeah, this is in your formula sheet on page 12, so you won't have to remember this, uh, but you'll have to remember, uh, you know, all these symbols, like what, what is the cal gas, the cal mix, the this, this flow of cal, you'll have to remember what those are. Uh, because it, this is, it only gives you this in the formula book, so you'll have to know what each one of these means. And this this basic uh, diagram here, block diagram, is 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 a good one for for you to bring to the college, and that's well, just bring your ILMs, and then you have it. So the summary here: the chemical reaction of nitrous oxide and ozone produce light. This chemiluminescence reaction is used for concentration analysis of NO2. Chemiluminescent nitric oxide analyzer uses the following components. Of course, we talked about the ozonator. We talked about the NO2 to, uh, uh, to NO converter, the reaction chamber, photomultiplying tube, and pump and scrubber. Chemiluminous analyzers um, use a bypass around the NO2 to NO converter. And that's when it's changing from NOx to NO, NOx to NO. And when you have a NOx and we subtract the NO, then we're going to get our NO2 concentration for analysis. And that's it. It's down and dirty quick. The uh, labs that we're going to be doing next week, Tim, uh, uh, Tyler said there's six that we mandatory have to get done. Do you know what six labs those are? Yeah, you have to do... Uh, two analyzers. You have to do two environmental analyzers. Let me let me get on this for a sec here. Sure. Stop recording. <clears throat>